Hi, I'm Michael Welch, President and Chief Executive Officer of Rocky Mountain High Brands. Today we have a special podcast at a special time. We want to clear up some confusion in the marketplace concerning our deal with CBD Alimentos and the permits that were issued in Mexico uh, just recently. So I'm going to, I have my favorite guest, Christian <laughs> Vega. Hello. Uh, here, the head of Team Mexico, uh, to actually address this issue and to introduce another guest that we have via Skype. Great. Thank you for asking me to, to, to come to your show. And uh, yeah, like you said, this is of an uh, urgent matter the, to uh, clarify uh, some misleading information out there on the web and uh, some uh, uh, confusion as far as the press releases and, and the information coming out of the uh, uh, recent news that Mexico made history as far as the uh, CBD products and supplements going into Mexico. So right, that's what we're here for. That's um, so. All right, great, great. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Alejandro Montano, who is our, not only he was uh, uh, one of the key uh, pieces of the puzzle to uh, make this deal come through as far as uh, putting our company, Rocky Mountain High, and um, CBD Alimento, CBD Live, and uh, Bean Company, which is his, uh, his company as well, um, he can help us identify and help us control, I mean, uh, uh, clarify a lot of the stuff that's going on in Mexico and the United States as far as news and any confusion. So with all the, Senor Alejandro. Hi, you? good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for joining us, Alejandro. Hey, Michael, thank you, sir. Good to see you. Likewise. Um, so yes, we wanted to uh, help clarify the confusion. Um, we initially had signed the our contract between CBD Alimentos and Rocky Mountain High because we, we, we have different vehicles in which we were structuring this whole operation in Mexico and we actually got some of the names confused. Um, is something that is being amended as we speak right now. Uh, we will fix that contract right away. And um, please rest assured that we keep working hard to develop our clientele in Mexico and, and, and ramping up volumes uh, for us to be able to make an import early next year. Um, we continue to work with you guys to become the largest distributor of, of cannabis-derived products in Mexico. And, and we are actually making history together because we were the first company to be awarded um, uh, the permit to import CBD-infused drinks. And uh, the market is reacting really well in Mexico to our California iced tea and lemonade and rocket high. And uh, we cannot disclose right now the people that we're talking with, neither the volumes, um, but we're expecting this to be a huge success and we're very excited to continue to work with you guys. So Alejandro, can you uh, clarify what the relationship between CBD Alimentos and CBD Life is? Uh, yes, uh, those companies belong to the same group, to uh, Grupo RCH, and it was just a, a confusion in mixing the names of the a company that was going to apply for the permits. So how many permits did CBD Life uh, receive uh, in the process? Mm -hmm. We received 21 products that will be um, in 29 present, different presentations. So it's 20, 21 different uh, SKUs that we received. Okay, and uh, of the 21 different SKUs, how many of those SKUs are attributable to Rocky Mountain High brands? That'll be three. That's uh, Rocket High Energy Drink, uh, California Iced Tea, and California Lemonade. Okay, okay. Those are the only three uh, drinks that are available to be sold in the Mexican market right now, and we have those permits. Okay. Now, since there are two versions of each one of those, is that does that actually uh, come out to be six? Well, they have the. Uh, they're waiting for a response on that. They had the sugar-free versions of everyone uh -huh. as well. So there's six queues, but there's three permits that follow for that. Oh, okay. that's so, correct. Okay. So the six queues are correct, but there's three permits that will follow per brand. So Rocket oh, okay. High, okay. Lemonade, so and Black uh, Tea. So right a, behind it, there's okay. the other ones, but okay. um, they apply for all their all of our permits or every single product that we had in there. So oh, okay. We're, we're okay. Okay, so we're covered on the permits now. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, that's great. Right. That's great. So, um, 
and, and there's been a lot of confusion out there on the market. There's people out there saying, you know, we're, we're looked at the, uh, for example, we were, uh, the Mexican team was in Forbes, Mexico, and, and they saw CBD Live being mentioned. Um, the Rocket High drink was in a Mexican newspaper called La Reforma, which was labeled. And the funny thing to me is that some of those investors and some of the shareholders are going, it's not, it's not power, you know, it's not Rocky Mountain High brands and it's not Alimentos. But if you look at the can <laughs> on right. the newspaper, it, it says, says right powered there. powered by Rocky Mountain High. No, guys, we're very sorry <laughs> for the confusion. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was merely, you know, some typo. Um, uh, we're really sorry for that. So it's identical to the can that you have right there. Right. Right, Christian? Exactly. Matt, if you can cut to that can mm -hmm. uh, that we have, um, it's the identical can mm -hmm. to, the, to that one. Right. And so the only thing that would be, it, it's identical. The addition to the label is the actual official Kofi Pre's uh, license number on it okay. or the apartment number on right. it. Right. And so that is the only addition that we would have to add to that label, which we got them as soon as they got those license numbers and, or the certificate numbers for the uh, Kofi Pre's, which is a specific number for can cannabis products. When we got those, we added them up and they already been sent out for printouts, for new printouts. So that's one of the reasons why we had to wait so long to get this on the market or even get the image out because it was not 100% complete. Needless to say, we still got it out so everybody can see it, right? But as of today uh, or yesterday, we got the official Kofi Priest license number of the permit that is tied to the permit in Mexico City. And that permit is tied to Rocky Mountain High Brands as well as powered by Rocky Mountain High Brands. And so we're, we're linked together in this permit um, right. as a companies together. So just to clarify the confusion out there, we are on the permit. It says power by Rocky Mountain High. We were showing that on the can, it reflects that as well. Um, and on the uh, permit license number, I believe it's what's called, it's gonna be on the bottom of the, of, of right near the power by Rocky Mountain High, that will reflect the, uh, the information of the permit. So. For those who have issues or have a misunderstanding, you know, Alejandro, ourselves, uh, hopefully next week, the, uh, our CEO for, and our uh, COO from CBD Life can come over and, and share their story and share, you know, how all this went down. But uh, everybody, you know, out there, um, please, uh, we done everything legitimately, everything's done correctly. And, um, and believe it that we're making history. We are, we're part of history with Mexico. We're part of history with uh, RCH group. We're part of history with Alejandro and him being the international business director of this company, CBD Life. Um, so those who have any doubts and, and see some stuff on the internet, don't believe everything. Wait for us to tell you what's going on, <laughs> you know? So Alejandro. Yeah, Christian, thank you. Um, you know, we, we wanted to express how, you know, we can't stress enough how excited we are to to have been able to roll out these two products that we've been working with you guys for the past two years in research and development. And now we finally have a finalized product, uh, the permits to be able to import the only three CBD infused drinks into the market. Um, and the, the, the relevancy of, of these SKUs and why they're so important is that they contain a small amount of CBD, which is a great way to uh, help people get used to the substance, which is non-psychotropic. We know all the benefits that CBD has um, and that are being acknowledged by the Mexican government. And and in that way, people can get familiarized with something at a very scalable and very large volume, you know, with the price points that we still cannot um, uh, share publicly because, you know, we have to launch that strategy uh, jointly with you guys. And when the timing is right uh, and once we're ready to to deploy the, the product. Um, it's going to make it very accessible to the vast majority of the Mexican population. You know, we're we're trying to position these in all of our retail uh, channel and convenience as well. Some of the pharmacies may even take our products as well, the the drinks as well to be selling them at their shelves. We don't know that yet, um, but it's certainly going to scale up uh, significantly. 
Well, we like hearing that, Alejandro. We're <laughs> we're ready for that to happen. So, in in terms of where we go from here, um, can we talk about what the next steps are, Christian? Um, well, basically, what we're working on right now ourselves is to do a small test run that we are going to do a actually a border crossing run as well, test run, to make sure that everything goes on or as it should be, uh, and any snafus. I'd rather them hold, it, hold back a pallet instead of hauling 20 truckloads, right? Right. So we're doing that right now. We're working on, on getting the, um, the test run. Uh, it's ready. It'll be set up and ready to go on December 7, December 8. Should be ready by December 15. Um, and then we're going to get back with the team in Mexico and, and, and uh, strategize how we're going to approach this, how we're going to make this happen. We delivered to Laredo, Texas. Right. And then those guys come in and pick it up from there. And so they'll cross the border. With, right, they'll actually. Right. And they, they literally have to do a test. I mean, they right. literally have to get, they're going to verify paperwork, verify labels, verify packaging, verify all that stuff. So it's a lot easier to do one pallet at right. a time for right now. A, a test, uh, basically a test run. It sounds funny, right? Like a test run through the border, but the opposite way. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's a caravan on your way down, folks, but it's right. a bunch of Rocky Mountain High that's going that way. So, right. um, once that gets all done and true and, and completed and uh, and we have no snafus, then uh, surely we'll find out the quantities that these guys are going to come up with. Right. And then we'll we'll strategize the best plan uh, available to uh, make sure that we can deliver to their clients. Right. And we have our co-packer lined up. Mm -hmm. We have all of that. All, all of those arrangements have been made. I know you've been working very hard. Yeah, yeah. You and Oscar have been working very hard on that aspect of it to make absolutely. sure that's lined up. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're ready to go into manufacturing when mm -hmm. we get the purchase order from. Right. Let me let me make clear. Now, Hunter, you can back me up on this one. It, we're not concerned about the purchase order number, right? We we have the permit in Mexico. Right. We're the only company who's gonna who just made history right. with these guys in Mexico, right? right. With the RCH group, right? Right. There's no one else we're competing. Right. Just, just look at it this way. You know, we're we're not competing with any other company who's doing C B D drinks in the United States. Right. Mm -hmm. We're competing against ourselves. Right. That's basically it. So when we have our conversations sometimes late night, sometimes early in the morning, because Alejandro is stationary in French right now. So I know over there it's what, nine maybe or ten o'clock at night right now. <laughs> so I don't even know what time it is yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, he he's a night crawler. I mean <laughs> he he stays up all night, I think, but that's he has no We're choice. Just working hard for you guys. Yeah, right, that's exactly. Great. Exactly. We know, hey, vice versa, we do the same thing. So um but we will sit down and look at the numbers that are coming in from all the distribution channels in Mexico. And then we'll, we'll strategize from there. We do not want to overdo ourselves and then fail to deliver. That would be catastrophic, right? Right, right. Because they have no one else to go to. Right. You know, right. they're not, right. well, if you're not going to deliver, then I'm going to get over here. No, no, no. We're the only one. So we have to make sure we do it correctly, right. do it right the first time. Right. And avoid any snafus, basically. So, Alejandro? No, we've been working on this, like I said, for two years and a half. We know your team. We know that you guys are capable of coming through. You have, we have developed a great product together, um, and we, we want this to be a huge success. So it's just a matter of time for us to be able to uh, launch officially in Mexico. We have uh, projected our, our launch in January 2019. Um, and um, again, you know, we're making history together. This is going to be the largest uh, distribution cha chain for cannabis derived products in Mexico, and we're planning on on taking this over internationally. This we're not going to stop in Mexico. We're going to go to uh, Latin America and Europe as well, and we can we're going to help in every way we can to help push the product in the United States as well. So when will you be taking it to France? <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully by the end of this year as well, or early next year. You know, we're trying to uh, coordinate all of our efforts to consolidate the products that we have in the U.S. and in Mexico, and bring them, uh, bringing them over to Europe as well, which where CBD is legal too. You know, there's some countries where it's still a gray area, but generally speaking, you know, since the World Health Organization um, uh, declared that CBD does not pose any threat. Uh, to human consumption, um, the European Union is pretty much following fo following that, and same does France. You know, on a specific on specifically the case of France, um, the Ministry of Health declared uh, CBD as safe to consume as well. So it is it is completely legal to be distributed and sold here. 
And you've been working this this European market for how long now, Alejandro? I know you've been there for a while because we talk all the time. But just for the people to understand uh, the the potential and the and how big this project is, right? Of so, course, um, I moved here earlier this year, and apart, you know, because of family ties and other economic and business interests, but mainly to open the European division for. Um, CBD Life and Wolf Distribution, which is our e-commerce platform, we're, uh, we're going to be able to sell all these brands, including Rocky Mountain High, um, Wolf California and Rocket High. And um, uh, this, this is, this is a very, I mean, it's a market of more than 500 million people. And e-commerce alone in France is close to 80 billion uh, euros a year. And it's got a growth of 15% year on year. And it's got great potential for all cannabis-derived products. I mean, France, you know, unofficial figures from the United Nations is one of the largest consumers of cannabis in the world. And it's not right on track for um, uh, its regulation as well. And we, we strongly believe that there's going to be huge markets, market acceptance for these products. Well, that sounds very promising, Alejandro. And you speak French, right? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah. Do you want to do some French words for Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Je m'appelle Christian. <laughs> Je m'appelle Christian. You, you can That's confuse me very quickly. Uh, see, every time he says that, I wish I knew what he was saying, but I, I have no clue and I have no interest in knowing either. So uh, all I care is that he's got a great system in French. He's got a great uh, uh, vision and now he's got a great product which is the Rocky and the California and other products that he's got in hand so uh, Alejandro is way back I mean he's he's a, an international business major I believe um, I know I think his profile so he knows all this stuff but um, we got the best of the best in the team right now as far as Mexico Europe and United States all we need to do is get all the shareholders to get on track and get on board and understand that this was not an easy process and and as I said before, the sky is the limit, right? We're 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 you know we're having a conversation with uh, Alejandro and friends, and we're you know we're not we're not kidding. We're serious. We need to get this thing going, and, and it's going to get global. And that's the whole. Goal. I totally Keep. agree. I totally so. agree. Alejandro, did you you um, were you there when Kofi Priest issued all the permits to Janko? I believe there's a video of it. Um, were you happen to be there at that time? I know there was other yes, companies involved. Yes, of course. I, I was there. Um, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> and <laughs> there were other, six other companies that got awarded the same products, uh, the, their permits as well on the same day. Mm -hmm. And um, all the media was there. It was a, a, a very special day. Right. And that was one of the things that some of the folks out there, the shareholders, are, they're saying, well, we're not the only company. We're the only beverage company. Let me make that That's correct. very clear. We're the only beverage company bringing in beverages of uh, CBD infused drinks through RCH group and whoever they bring it to distribution company, right? right. The, you know, we, it's been a partnership of doing a lot of hard work. We had a difficult time over here creating the product, you know, mixing oil with water, just don't mix, right? So that was one of the biggest hurdles we did. Their job out there is, it's a difficult job too. They have to get distribution companies together. They gotta get the line, the contracts lined up, the right price for everybody can make money. Um, so we both it's, work It's not gonna hard. be as, as easy as it sounds though right. for other competitors to come in. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, it is open for everyone, but you have to remember that Coffee Pris is one of the most stringent and, and the most strict uh, processes even more than the FDA in order for you to be able to register any kind of product um, you know needless to say cannabis derived product you know but mm -hmm. which right now they're 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 classified as as food supplements but still it is a lengthy process <laughs> like Christian said to analyze a product at a, at a third party lab and comply with all the requirements that Cofepris imposes for you to be able to register a product absolutely absolutely and, and I mean it People thought that this was a six months, a three months. It's been a year process just right. to get Kofor Priest to to look and review our permits. Right. right. <laughs> you know, and then after that, I mean, um, even at the last minute, I mean, just recently they, they came back at Alejandro said we need certain certificates of certain things and certificates of, of this and that. And we're like, OK, let me get it for you. Not a problem. Let me jump on it. So, well, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, it's not easy task, but we're here now. Uh, and whatever you hear out there on the Web, listen to this video check us out listen to what we're telling you and then um and then we go from there so
Well, we certainly appreciate you joining us today. We, uh, we are still overcoming some of the sins of our prior management, so we have credibility with our investors that we're still trying to rebuild in this company. And the one thing that I can ensure all of our investors is that we're telling the truth, that I stand by my word, and that we are telling the truth in all of these podcasts. And I, I, I really think that we're the most transparent small company that you're going to find um, in, in, in this uh, marketplace. So uh, I don't know how else to say this, but uh, this isn't the first time that uh, uh, RCH Grupo approached Rocky Mountain High, is it? Didn't, uh, didn't, didn't RCH Grupo approach Rocky Mountain High when previous management was in charge and then come back to us after there was a management change we did yeah. we, we did uh-huh. reach out to you guys and we received no response until we <laughs> had to go pretty much physically knocking on your doors a few months after uh-huh. and that's when we got received uh, received by you got welcomed by you guys and um uh, we were able to actually get the ball rolling well, we're glad. We didn't that, know it, you guys had had a, a, a change in management. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're certainly glad that you did, and apologize for the the first uh, uh, treatment that you got by our company. It's not it's not the culture no that we uh, we have created since then. So um, uh, we really clear. we really appreciate your business, and we're honored to work with you and your team. No, likewise. We're very grateful to you, uh, gentlemen, as well. Uh, we know that we've all invested time and resources in building this together. And uh, we really appreciate Christian's support and, and diligence and leadership in, in, in this project. And um, uh, we're, we're very much looking forward to developing this business and growing together. I couldn't agree more. Christian has worked very, very hard on this. And uh, I know he's worked seven days a week on it. And <laughs> We really appreciate it, and he's he's overcome some significant hurdles. So yeah, I, I you know, you know the two CEO or, or John Cohen and Michael here, they you guys have a loud voice every once in a while. So <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's great. I mean, someone's got to be the bridge, right? So, uh, but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's been a great no. experience. Well, so. I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world on this end either. So I agree. thank you so much. Appreciate you. Alejandro, thank you so much for helping us out with this. Thank you for joining us today. No, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Michael. Please let us know if there's anything else that we can do to help, and we're always available. All right. Thank you, you, Christian.